This is flip mini lecture number 26, covering night section 10.5. Now I actually did this exact same material that I'm about to do here in this mini lecture in Monday's class, right after we did the solution to the second midterm. So I'm only doing this flip mini lecture for those that want to review that material, or maybe you were sick that day, um, and you, so you missed that material, you'll have a chance to, to see it. If you really feel like you've already got 10.5, just go on to the next flip mini lecture, which is number 27. Okay, so this one is about energy diagrams, and we're gonna get more sophisticated about energy diagrams. So we've been drawing energy diagrams with bar charts. So we might have a before situation where um, you have, let's say, just a mass, and it's being pulled down by gravity, and the before situation is I'm about to release it. So in the before situation, this thing has some y value, and the potential energy, u, is mgy. And then in the after situation, maybe this thing has fallen uh, down to some much lower y value. Maybe we're all the way down here, maybe it's about to hit the floor. And so now the after situation would be that this thing is now moving quite fast in the downward direction. So maybe I'll draw some wind coming off the back side of it. This thing's moving quite fast in the downward direction and it no longer has um, near as much height. So this might be a uh, y sub final. And now that we have two heights in the problem, this is still the y axis, but this is y sub initial. So the before is u initial is mgy initial, and the after is u final equals mgy final. Now the way we've been handling this is we've been drawing bar charts. So if you, instead of uh, this being the picture of what's going on with the particle, we could have on the vertical axis here, the potential. And the before situation would say, hey, uh, this height here is mgy initial, and before there was a lot of potential energy. And if I'd only just right at that moment at y initial just dropped it and it hadn't yet picked up any speed, then there would be no or very, very little kinetic energy. So this bar in the bar chart, U represents U, the potential energy, and this little low bar in the bar chart, which might even all the way be zero, represents K, the kinetic energy. And now the corresponding after diagram here, the uh, potential energy has, has greatly dropped. Now the potential energy here is just MGY final. And the kinetic energy has gotten big. But there's this thing that we know, and the thing that we know is that u plus k in the before situation is equal to u plus k in the after situation. So if we call this u initial and k initial, we call this u final and k final, then we know that u initial plus k initial is equal to u final plus k final. That's our conservation of energy equation. Well, you can rewrite that, of course, in lots of different ways. But the bottom line is it says the, su top, top, the sum of these two bar bars adds up to the same thing. So here's the new way we're gonna do that because we don't wanna write a new bar chart every time we do one of these. Now in this problem, the potential was mgy. So that's gonna be a line that goes through zero and has some slope. And then this particle, which began at some uh, high height, which was y initial, uh, started out there. And then this particle, which ended at some low height, y final, ended up there. So this is mgy initial, and this is mgy final. Now here, it was all potential energy. So that bar chart situation that we were drawing before has the only one bar, and it's all potential energy. Now over here, where this has gotten pretty low, we still have a potential energy bar. But we also have a kinetic energy bar. And instead of 
doing it the way we were before, you could put it right there. So this is now the kinetic energy from that point right there all the way to there. Why? Because this height, which is the before total amount of energy, must equal this height plus that height which is the after amount of energy. So on this, these if I stack these bar charts like this, that height must equal that height. But now we're getting rid of bar charts entirely, okay? So you erase all that junk that we were sticking in there, and you just read it like this. You say, okay, let's say the particle is right here. This is uh, Y sub, we had Y final, we had Y initial, uh, a letter that's between uh, I and F is G, so I'll call this Y sub G. There's some intermediate Y value. At this Y value, this right here is how much U we have. And because energy is conserved and the total amount is that, this to there must be how much kinetic energy we have. So in these new kinds of energy diagrams, you, you have a line representing the total energy, then you have a line representing the potential, and the, this distance from here to here is the potential energy, and this distance from here, the remainder, is the kinetic energy. And this is called an energy diagram. And for example, for a spring, if the equilibrium position of the spring, say, was x equals four meters, here's a spring, one, two, three, four, So if I go two meters either way from the four meter point, I'm up at 20 joules. Okay, now what? Well, now for the spring situation, it's the same idea. Uh, what you have is a situation and say if it was released from here and it was just released right from there with very little kinetic energy, then the total amount of energy in the system is however much energy was stored in the spring. And we already just figured out that the amount stored in the spring, if you stretch the spring or compress the spring by two, two meters, is 20 joules. And then the, the particle starts to move to the right, and it starts to pick up speed, and the amount of kinetic energy it has is that line right there, and the amount of potential energy it has is right there. And then it picks up some more speed until it gets to the middle, and now it's all kinetic energy. And then it picks up some, starts dropping speed as it goes to the, the other direction. So now the spring is opposing the motion. So now there's my kinetic energy and there's my potential energy. And it gets all the way to, uh, if this was two meters compressed, that's two meters extended. It gets all the way to two meters extended where it comes to a halt and then turns around. Out of this, there's three terms that I want to add to these things. One term is that this point right here where the total energy is equal to the potential energy is called a turning point. At that point, the kinetic energy drops to zero and the particle turns around and goes back the other way. This is also, of course, a turning point over here. Here the particle was going to the right. As it got to this point, its kinetic energy got closer and closer to zero. Once its kinetic energy got to zero, it, turned, it stopped and then turned around and went back the other way. So those are called turning points. Uh, the equilibrium point of a spring right here, that's called, in this particular case, this is called a stable equilibrium. That means that if you have a particle sitting there and it's really not doing much of anything at all, and a little puff of air blows it to the right or a little puff of air blows it to the left, then the spring uh, restoring force is going to tend to bring it back to where it was originally sitting. So uh, this is called a stable equilibrium. Now there's actually another kind of equilibrium that's called an unstable equilibrium and an example of that is a pencil balanced perfectly on end. So if I have a pencil and it's balanced perfectly on end then it can just sit there like that. But if the slightest puff of air comes along Instead of being restored back to the center position, the slightest puff of air comes along and now it's tilted just a little bit, so I'm going to draw it in its new position here. Okay, it's 
slightest puff of air has come along and now it's in this new position. Uh, rather than it wanting to go back to where it originally was, it moves faster and faster in the direction in which it was pushed. So, uh, yes, standing on the N is called an, is an equilibrium, but this is called an unstable equilibrium because if you deviate off of it at all, then uh, the particle just moves further and further away from that equilibrium point. So now you have three terms, uh, and the three terms are that you can have uh, a turning point, um, and the other two terms are that you could have an equilibrium, and those can come in the stable kind of equilibrium, like a spring near its uh, its equilibrium point, which restores you back to where you were if you deviate from that point a little bit, or an unstable equilibrium point, where if you deviate from the equilibrium point by a little bit, you get thrown further and further off. Now, that's my summary of the material presented in uh, 10.5. I think uh, if you want, you could read 10.5, or maybe that was clear enough that we could just go right on to 10.6. That's what flipped lecture 27 will be about.